happy Thursday. Today is May 28th and it's day 71 of missing my kiddos. Um, it's also my niece Emma, it's her graduation today. So happy graduation to Emma, class of 2020. And my neighbors are having some kind of pool party and they're being really super loud. So if you hear any like screaming or anything, they're in the pool. Just letting you know now. <laughs> oh, and my shirt, in case you're wondering about this, it was National Hot Dog Day when we went to a Baltimore Oriole game. <laughs> and we got free shirts. So this one was mine. All right. It's very comfy. I'm ready for comfy. <laughs> I've been living comfy for 71 days. Who am I kidding? Anywho, uh, we are still reading Ralph S. Mouse by Beverly Cleary. And we are on Chapter 4. And this one is Life at School. Ooh, I'm having a really bad hair day. <laughs> Also 71 days of bad hair days. Dusk began to fall in room five, making the inside of Melissa's boot even darker when suddenly Ralph heard music. The lights were turned on. Yeah, see, this is not good. And a man with a transistor radio fastened to his belt came into the room and lifted chairs onto tables. He began to sweep with a wide broom while the radio poured forth sad songs about lonely highways, broken hearts, and jail. That would be country music, my friends. The songs made Ralph feel gloomy as well as sulky. He began to feel sorry for himself. The long haul, so perfect for motorcycle riding, was dark and empty. His heart was broken over the loss of his motorcycle, and he might as well be in jail, as in this old boot. When the man swept his way to the back of the room, he unexpectedly set Melissa's boots upright, side by side, tumbling Ralph down to the foot, where he sat trembling with nerves and self-pity until his ears told him the man had replaced the chairs on the floor, turned off the lights, and left. Because he was a mouse, Ralph found sleeping at night almost impossible. Without the grandfather clock to mark the hours, the night seemed endless. Why should I sit here in this smelly old jail of a boot when everyone is so mean to me, Ralph asked himself. And with the cruelty of the world as an excuse for breaking his promise to Ryan, he used his sharp claws to climb the boot lining. Quickly, he leaped out and squeezed under the door of room five. Nobody was going to stop him from exploring the Irwin J. Sneed Elementary School. After a long and wistful look at the lonely highway in the hall, <laughs> Ralph found exploration more interesting and profitable than he had expected. In room four, the laundry's done. <laughs> he discovered strange looking pictures spread out on the floor beneath the blackboard. They were made by gluing different kinds of seeds to heavy paper and had been left on the floor to dry. Ralph made a very nutritious meal of split peas, rice, and lentils before moving on to another room where he found an open jar of library paste glue. Delicious. And here he is <laughs> sniffing the, well, the glue. Don't do that, by the way. <laughs> Another room furnished with long tables and benches was near a kitchen where Ralph chewed into a bag of sugar and enjoyed a fine dessert. Oh my goodness. After this gourmet meal, Ralph walked rather than scampered down the hall that perfect place for riding his motorcycle if Ryan had not been so mean, to a room with carpet and bookshelves on the walls. Hmm. A boring place for a mouse, Ralph decided, until he discovered something very interesting on a bottom shelf behind a big desk. It turned out to be a book inside a bag made of two layers of brown paper. A tear in the outer layer revealed something unexpected in the lining. Ralph could not believe the treasure he had found. Between the layers of paper was ready chewed mouse nest. So it's like a padded envelope. Ralph pulled out some of the nest to examine its delicate texture. Mmm, first quality grade A mouse nest. He made the hole in the bag still larger, crawled inside, and curled up in the coziest bed he had ever known. Oh boy, do you think what's. Uh... I don't know about this, Ralph. Ralph intended to rest there while he plotted to get his motorcycle away from Ryan, but his full meal made him drowsy, and instead, he fell asleep. Awaking to the sound of school buses, he ran back to room five just in time as his former friend was hanging up his parka. Ralph ran up the leg of Ryan's jeans and onto his shirt. Give me my motorcycle, he demanded, trying to sound fierce. 
Ryan quickly faced the corner so nobody could see Ralph. Be quiet, you're not supposed to be here, he whispered. Like I said, I'll give it to you after you run the maze. Who says I'm gonna run it? Ralph was sullen about this whole affair. I do. Ryan tried to speak without moving his lips. If you want your motorcycle back, where is it? Ralph wanted to know, right here. Ryan moved, removed the motorcycle from his parka and placed it in one of his shirt pockets. Go back to your boot. Don't call it my boot, said Ralph. It's dusty and smelly. Will you be quiet if I let you stay in my pocket? Yeah, sure. A shirt was warm and soft, and it had a good view of the classroom if a hole was nipped in the pocket. As he dropped Ralph into his pocket, Ryan said, and another thing, don't chew any more holes in my pockets. Mom didn't like it when she saw holes in the new shirt I wore yesterday. We'll see about that, thought Ralph, determined not to let the lubbub of Ryan's heart lull him to sleep again until he figured out how to get that motorcycle back. For a better view of room five, he bit a careful peephole, one thread down and one thread across, oops, down and then across, in Ryan's pocket. Ralph watched with puzzled interest while the class worked with numbers and words. Late in the morning, the children formed a double line, something Ralph had never before witnessed, and walked quietly to the library where they selected books to read. Why can't mice behave like that? Ralph wondered. When Ryan had found the book he wanted, he took the little red motorcycle out of his pocket and amused himself by running it back and forth across the table before, oh no, while he softly went, the sound was enough to break a mouse's heart. The most interesting part of the day turned out to be late in the afternoon when the class worked on their projects for what the children called the Great Mouse Exhibit. Miss Kay read a poem that Ralph had found difficult to understand, something about a wee, sleek, cowern, timorous beastie, <laughs> while the class worked with crayons and paper. Ralph saw strange pictures of himself beginning to emerge. They were making him look very big, except for one boy who drew a cat that filled up the whole paper and then added a tiny mouse down in one corner. Other boys and girls bent over their paper, writing, pausing to gnaw their pencils and then writing again. Others behaved strangely, nodding their heads, tapping their pencils and playing, softly chanting to dum, to dum, to dum, to dum, or ta ta dum, ta ta dum. The noises sounded something like an Indian war dance in an old movie on TV, thought Ralph, puzzled. Ryan and Brad worked with glue and some old cartons on a table at the back of the room. They moved around so much and Ralph's people was so tiny, he could not get a very clear idea of what they were building. Apparently they did not have a very clear idea themselves because they argued about the way to make the partitions of the maze stand up. They argued about the height of the partitions. We don't want him to be able to see over them even if he stands on his hind legs. and the length and number of the blind alleys. Blind meaning that it's gonna end up being a dead end. Mostly they argued about the difficulty of the maze. Let's make it really hard, said Brad. Ralph decided he did not like Brad with his tousled hair, grubby t-shirt and unfriendly ways. Well, not too hard, said Ryan. Oh, come on, said Brad. Making tunnels and trap doors would be fun. Real mazes aren't like that and it wouldn't be fair, protested Ryan. He's just a little mouse. Besides, we haven't figured out how to make the partition stand up. You're scared he can't do it, said Brad. Of course he can do it. Ryan was at least loyal. But what if I can't do it? Ralph worried. What if I run around bumping my nose against dead ends? Then how would Ryan feel after all his bragging? A terrible thought occurred to Ralph. If he failed and everyone laughed, Ryan might not give back the motorcycle after all. Ralph decided there was only one thing to do. Get up on that table at night and practice. Mm -hmm. He would memorize that maze so he could dash through the passages without bumping his nose even once. Do you think that's fair or is that kind of like cheating? Mm. Ralph had no sooner made this decision than part of the maze must have fallen down because Ryan said, see, I told you it wouldn't work that way. Brad lost his patience. All right, he said, since you're so smart, you can make your own dumb maze for your own dumb mouse. I'll write a poem instead. You don't like to write poems, Ryan reminded him. Well, I'd rather write a poem than work on your dumb maze for your dumb mouse. 
answered Brad. His name should be Ralph D. Mouse. D for dumb. Okay, said Ryan. Suit yourself, but I don't see why you have to be so touchy all the time. Good, thought Ralph. Ryan will make it easy. When the last bell rang, Ryan asked permission to work on the maze at home because he still hadn't figured out how to make the partition stand up. Oh, of course you may, Miss Kay told him, thereby destroying Ralph's plan to practice and cheat. I hoped you and Brad might become friends if you worked together. She raised her voice above the scramble for jackets and caps. Class, I have a surprise, she announced. Someone who writes stories for the Cucaracha Voice heard about our mouse exhibit and wants to write it up for the paper. She's going to come Friday afternoon and bring a photographer. Cucaracha, although it had grown since the gold rush days, was still a small town. News traveled fast. There was a buzz of excitement. Room 5 was going to have its picture in the newspaper. When Ryan plucked Ralph from his pocket, Ralph asked in his tiniest voice, do I get a chance to practice running through that thing before Friday? That would be cheating, said Ryan through his, oh, through his lips. That's right. He's still trying to pretend he's not talking. The same as looking at test questions before a test. Just one little peek, coaxed Ralph. Nope. Ryan poked Ralph into Melissa's boot and ran off to catch his bus. Oh. Ralph crawled down around the bend to the toe of the boot where he sat brooding ugh, in the dusty, musty dark. For the first time since he had left the inn, he began to wonder if anyone missed him in his old home. It was a shorter chapter, wasn't it? So chapter five is next time tomorrow, the Great Mouse Exhibit. Mm. Sounds interesting and fascinating. Okay, you guys, today is Thursday, right? Yeah, I have to check my calendar. <laughs> oh, tomorrow's the last day of school. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> have a great day, you guys. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.